Welcome back, Netrunner fans, to part two of my The Underway review. In this part, I'm going to be looking at all the Corp cards that are in the pack. The first card that we have is kind of strange. This is a new asset for HB. It's called Test Ground, not Testing Ground. It's zero to res, two to trash. Test Ground can be advanced, trash, de-res, one card for each advancement token on test ground. So at first, this card seems pretty puzzling. Why would you want to derez your own stuff? Well, I can come up with a few things. The first one is that if you have some sort of card that when it's rezzed, it does something, like Elizabeth Mills is a pretty good example, this could potentially interact with that. By the same token, it also works with the campaigns like Adonis or Eve, since when you derez them, they'll be able to retain the money that they already have on them. If you re-res them, they'll get more money. That could potentially be really strong in the decks that we already see that play like Breaker, Baygrid, and Adonis. This would give you a way to kind of make your Adonis perpetual and it would let you reload it without actually having to like recur the Adonis or get another copy. I don't know if that's going to be better than just playing another economy card instead of Test Ground, but it is something that you can do. Another thing I wanted to point out is that there's some misconceptions I've seen online regarding Parasite with this. If you derez a parasited ice, it doesn't destroy the parasite. The parasite stays on the thing, it continues to accumulate counters. The only thing is that the, the ice won't be destroyed since derezzed ice don't have strength. So the parasite will stay in play, it won't necessarily save your ice, but it could maybe delay a bit so that you could like kill the parasite later. Doesn't really seem worth it. This is the type of card that I think will make more sense in the future when we have more assets or maybe upgrades or maybe even ice that have some ability when they're rezzed. That to me seems like the best thing with this and I think maybe we could see more powerful effects in the future that interact with that. Next up we have a new current for HB. It's called Defective Brain Chips. It's two to play one influence. It's not trash till another current is played or the runner steals an agenda. That's the current part. The first time the runner takes brain damage each turn, he or she takes an additional brain damage. This is a pretty sweet current and one that's going to obviously fit into the cybernetics division deck that I was talking about in the last video. I think there's an emerging archetype that's focused on reducing the runner's maximum hand size and then either just flatlining them with normal damage or just reducing their, their hand size to a negative number so that they die at the end of their turn. This card obviously facilitates that and is definitely going to fit into that type of strategy really, really well. It makes a lot of brain damage ice a lot scarier and it also makes some of the fringe brain damage effects, you know, like Ryan Knight and stuff like that, a lot more realistic. If you can hit him for two instead of one brain damage, that's pretty significant. It also might be kind of nice to have a solution to hacktivist meaning. I think there's more and more of that floating around, and it seems like you're going to play quite a few effects, whether it be economy assets or stuff like the Ryan Knight I was just mentioning, that you're going to need to res, and that's definitely a big pain in the rear if they have hacktivist meeting. This will be a nice way to get rid of that, and it'll also be a nice way to make those brain damage effects have a much higher power level. Next up, we have a new asset for Genteki. This is Allele Repression. It's 2 to res, 2 to trash. 3 influence. It can be advanced, and then it has trash, swap one card in HQ with one card in archives for each advancement token on it. Ugh. I'm pretty underwhelmed with this card. The effect is super cool. The idea that you can swap HQ for archives, that stuff is really neat. I like the idea of being able to switch the cards out. But the particular way that this works seems really cumbersome and expensive. you got to pay two to res it, and then you're also going to have to have it advanced. I mean, what are you going to do? Motion notion this thing? Seems pretty bad. 
The biggest use that I can come up with with this is industrial genomics. Seems like it might work pretty well there. You can put cards face down into the archives, charge up the trash costs for stuff. It also gives you a way to get things like shock or shq or other nasty stuff that you want in archives. Let's you swap them out of your hand and put them there at the same time that you're going to get stuff like hedge fund back. Maybe this card could see some limited use in that deck. But I think overall it's just going to be too cumbersome to play an advanceable asset, even though this effect is really cool and interesting. I think largely this is going to be explored in the Industrial Genomics deck, but really just sit in the box otherwise. Next up we have Marcus Beatty. He's a new upgrade for Genteki. He's 0 to res, 1 to trash, he's 3 influence, and he's unique. He's a sysop psi. He has trash. Play the side game. If you win, resolve one subroutine on a res piece of ice protecting this server. Use the ability only during a run on the server. Well, I imagine the Caprice Nisei hate team is going to be on site for this card as well. Anybody who hates the side game is probably going to hate this card. But I think this is a much less frustrating card than Caprice because you have to trash it to get the effect to work. Most of the commentary I've seen for this guy online has been about awesome subroutines that you can resolve with him. You know, things like the Heimdall ending the run in brain damage, or like Next Gold that has Trash X programs or do X damage. Both of those are pretty obscene. It is scary that you can trash programs with this and wreck their rig even though they broke all their ice. But really, I think the most powerful thing and the most common thing you're going to use this guy for is just ending the run. You can defend your scoring remote with this dude. I think I'm going to try this in RP as a way to free up influence by cutting Ash. I think I could do kind of the same thing with Ash, not quite as well, but well enough with this guy. You could have Caprice and him in one server. That seems pretty gross. He is a one-shot so you're going to only be able to use him that one time to protect the server. But in a deck like RP, that definitely seems like enough to me. I don't really think you need to get multiple uses out of this guy to really have that end the run matter a lot. It might be worth mentioning that this guy is a sysop. So you'd be able to tutor him up with that recent recruiting trip. I think a lot of people are disappointed that you couldn't get Caprice with recruiting trip. Thank God you can't. But you can get this guy. So it might be maybe worth considering playing Recruiting Trip just to get this guy to help defend one of your at one of your servers. It's clear to me that this guy is going to immediately see play. I'm going to be trying him in RP just because I think it would be nice to have another way to defend your remotes. I think a lot of Glacier styles are going to want that sort of effect outside of RP. It's also worth including this guy in a deck that already plays some of the ice with those bomb subroutines. I could definitely see HB decks that already play like Next Gold or, or things that trash programs or have other strong subs wanting this guy just because of the strong effect. As excited I am that there's a new kind of Glacier option, I wish it wasn't really in Jinteki. I wish we had some more Glacier options, especially for like Wayland and HB. I think it's fair to say that Ash is quite a bit worse than Caprice. And now that we have Caprice and this dude, and of course we could still play Ash, it seems like Jinteki's really got the best of it when it comes to Glacier. Next up, we have a new asset for NBN. This is Expose. It's 2 to res, 2 to trash, also 2 influence. It can be advanced, and then it has trash. Remove a bad pub for each advancement token on it. This card really isn't very good. I think its stats are the core problem. You really have to pay 2 to res this, and then it's also 2 to trash. Ugh, I don't really like this. I don't think there's a lot of incentive in the current game to remove bad pub, especially in NBN, which is largely just playing either flatline with meat damage or just astrobiotics like it's been playing since the beginning of time. I don't really see you wanting to play this in either of those decks. I don't think there's a lot of incentive to play bad pub effects in NBN or really in very many decks. This is one of the worst ways to remove bad pub, I would say. I mean, it's nice to have more options, but an advanceable asset that does it, 
uh, I think I'll just leave this in the box. Next up, we have a new NBN piece of ice. It's called Pachinko. It's one to res, four strength, it's a barrier, and it's one influence. Has two subroutines, which are end the run if the runner is tagged. This piece of ice has quite a bit going for it. It's high strength, low res, and low influence, and it's got two subs. So it's going to be expensive to break if you can enable the end the run with the tag thing. Now the problem is you have to be able to get them tagged and be able to use this. I think that there's some decent ways to do this. It is worth noting that it interacts with bandwidth pretty well. Also, Data Raven or any of the other ice that tag them during the run. It would also be good with the more obvious tag effects, you know, like mid-season replacements. I think that this maybe could see some fringe use in decks that are trying to get them tagged early and often. But I think really the only way to do that within NBN right now is the mid-season thing with the meat damage. And I'm not sure that you'd be willing to play a conditional piece of ice in that deck. You don't really care about taxing them in the butcher shop deck. You more just want ice that stops them temporarily. And I don't think you really have a, a role for something like this where you're going to have to have mid-seasoned them before it even does anything. Maybe if you built a making news deck that had a lot of the ice that tagged them during a run, like the ones I mentioned earlier, or even things like Hunter and, and Shadow and stuff like that. If you played a bunch of those kind of things, I could maybe see this working. But I'm not usually a fan of combinations of ice or even combinations of cards, especially when you could just play like Eli or something like that and, and get a pretty similar effect without having to rely on weird tagging them during the run stuff. This certainly isn't the worst piece of NBN ice, but I think this kind of is plagued by the same thing that a lot of the conditional NBN ice have been plagued with, where it kind of requires other cards to really have anything to, to do. I think Bandwidth has sort of had trouble with that as well. So I think this is probably not going to see a lot of play. But I do think that it has really good stats for its res cost. And the low influence could potentially mean that it could see some play in some other decks. Definitely not a worthless card, but not one that I'm particularly excited to try. Next up, we have a new agenda for Wayland. This is Underway Renovation. It's a three for one. It's initiative and it's public. Public means that you install it face up. Whenever you advance Underway Renovation, trash the top card of the runner stack or the top two cards if there are four or more tokens on it. I don't really think this is that great. It seems to me like it's pretty difficult to get a whole lot of value out of this thing. Realistically, how many cards are you going to be trashing? Now, I like the idea of some sort of effect that allows you to trash cards off the runner stack. That seems like a cool area of the design space that hasn't really been explored. But I'm not sure that a 3 for 1 agenda in Wayland is exactly where I would like to see that explored. I really like public... I think Oaktown Renovation has been awesome. It's really cool. It's nice that they know it's it's Oaktown, and I just feel like that card's been really cool and fun and is actually a powerful and good card. This I'm not so sold on. I don't know how many Wayland decks actually want to play three-for-ones. I could see maybe something like Argus wanting to play this because it already wants to play some three-for-ones and some smaller agendas, and it's already doing kind of a damage-oriented style. For me, the biggest thing that kills this card is the fact that you can't really use it in combination with stuff like psychographics or things that put a bunch of counters on a card. Remember that advancing isn't the same thing as putting counters on a card, I think this would be a lot stronger if you could like psychographics it for a million billion and mill their, mill their deck. That I think would be a lot stronger or, you know, maybe not psychographics, but just other ways that you could dump counters on stuff using card effects. As it is, you're going to have to just put this in a server. You're going to have to advance it. I don't really see that being worth it. Next up, we have a new Wayland asset. 
This is contract killer. Two to res, three to trash. It's hostile. And it's four influence. Contract killer can be advanced. If there are at least two advancement tokens on it, it gains click, trash, trash a connection, or do two meat damage. This has a lot of really cool and interesting things going for it, and I think this might be my favorite of these new advanceable asset things that we got in this pack. That's been sort of a theme where each of the factions got some sort of advanceable asset that does some stuff. I think this one's pretty clearly the best. First of all, trashing connections is sweet. You're going to be able to kill their Katie Jones. You're going to be able to kill whatever sort of economy thing that they really need. I think the big targets are going to be either Aesop's, Katie Jones, or, or maybe a couple other things, but those seem like the big ones to me. Procon, I guess, is pretty brutal too. The two, two meat damage thing is also really cool because this is one of the few effects in Netrunner where you can do meat damage without them being tagged. This just lets you do the meat damage as long as you get the advancement thing. I like that because generally you're going to be able to have this in play, start your turn with advance, advance, and then still be able to fire at that turn. That seems pretty doable. This seems like an interesting option. I like that it's for influence so that it gives Wayland an effect that they're only able to do. And I'm glad that that effect is meat damage and killing connections. Both of those seem very Wayland to me. I really like this recent trend of giving Wayland some more control-oriented tools. And I think the ability to kill connections with surprise assets is definitely a good example of that. I also really like that this has three trash costs. You've probably heard me complain about low trash costs before, and three is right at the number where it's a huge pain in the rear to deal with this thing. I think this is a pretty interesting option. I don't think it's going to see a tremendous amount of play, but killing connections and doing meat damage in this strange way, both of those are definitely things that Waylon wants to do, so I could definitely see this card seeing some play. The next card is a Waylon piece of ice. It's called Spiderweb. It's four to res, two strength, two influence barrier. It has three subroutines. They're all end the run. There's maybe some comparisons to draw to Hive with this. Wayland's always been pretty good at barriers with lots of subroutines. And here's another variation on that theme. I think this is definitely a card that's going to see a little bit of play. It's not insanely good, but it's really good in a shaper-heavy metagame where Lady is one of the primary ways to deal with barriers. Three and the run subroutines is a huge pain for Lady. You have to spend two counters to break this four to res barrier that's probably one of their lower end barriers in their deck. And the nice different thing about this versus Hive is that it's not going to be bad late game when you've already scored a bunch of points. Hive's going to be a lot stronger early on because it's going to have five subs, but this is going to continue to have three subs. It's going to cost Corroder three. It's going to cost Lady two counters. It's just going to be a pain for all of the barrier breakers. This isn't exactly an exciting or sexy card, but I think this is an area of the design space that's needed more cards for a long time, and I'm glad to see Wayland, which I think is definitely one of the weakest factions in the game, get stuff like this. Just because it's going to be a huge pain for the breakers I was talking about, it's always going to be a nice tax, and there just aren't that many barriers in the game that have more than two subroutines, and this is just going to be a nice addition to that arsenal at a low res cost. It's got enough strength that it doesn't immediately die to Parasite. It's low enough influence that you can maybe consider it in some other decks. This is just all around a pretty versatile piece of ice that I guarantee we'll see a sum amount of play. The last card in the pack is a new neutral region. It's zero to res, three to trash. It's called Underway Grid. Ice protecting this server cannot be bypassed. Cards in and protecting this server cannot be exposed. And it's limit one region per server as they are. This is the type of card where I'm glad it exists 
but there's so little incentive to play this thing. This is probably going to sit in your box until there's some sort of different metagame that we can't yet anticipate. The best thing I can come up with that you can do with, the, with this in the current game is you have like a toll booth and they fem it or they inside job it or something like that. And then they have to deal with toll booth. Now that's awkward. You're going to have to have this resed before they encounter the ice. It's not really going to be very good to do that. The core problem with this card is that there aren't very many bypass effects in the game, and there are even fewer playable expose effects. Outside of the drive-by that we just saw in the last video, there's not really a lot of good expose effects. If Silhouette becomes the best runner in the game, maybe this could see some fringe play. But I think this is the type of card where it's awaiting a metagame that we're not in, and it's probably going to sit in your box until that day occurs, if it ever does. That's going to do it for the underway. I think it's fair to say that the runner got the better half of this pack, but there are definitely a few playables on the corpse side. I'm pretty excited about both Spiderweb and Marcus. Unfortunately, I think the cycle of advanceable assets all are going to be very fringe playables. In general, advanceable assets are bad. They require a lot of investment to get them to do their thing, and I don't know if any of them are really that great, with Contract Killer clearly being the best in my mind. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please press subscribe and the button that looks like a thumbs up, and I'll see you soon for some more Netrunner stuff.